This is the B550 Gaming X from Gigabyte. It's a full ATX motherboard which supports third generation Ryzen CPUs and APUs and above, although not the 3200G or 3400G. But let's get it out the box and let's have a look. So in the box you get the motherboard itself, two SATA cables for connecting SATA hard drives and SSDs to the board, a driver's DVD and some paperwork including a quick install guide and a printed manual. So looking at the motherboard itself, the AM4 socket supports Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series CPUs and 4000 series APUs but not the 3200G or 3400G because technically they are second gen, not third. Now just to note, if you do want to go to the 5000 series CPUs, odds are you're gonna need to update your BIOS. With this board you're in luck as it has BIOS Q Flash Plus, which means you can update it without having to use an old CPU. Fantastic news. Back to the board and there are four DDR4 RAM slots which support up to 128 gigabytes of dual channel memory, 32 gigabytes per slot and they can run at up to 4733 megahertz overclocked on third gen Ryzen APUs or 4400 megahertz overclocked on the CPUs. Although it is worth checking out the RAM compatibility lists on the Gigabyte website as always and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now, if you're only using two sticks of memory, it does show you on the board which two of the four slots to use, which is nice to see. Obviously, it is in the manual too, but it's handy to have it on the board so you don't have to keep going back and referring to it. Now, for storage, there are four SATA 6 gigabit per second connectors, and they are two on the side and two on the bottom. Now these support RAID 0, RAID 1 and RAID 10. The B550 Gaming X has two PCI Express M.2 slots here and here. Both support PCI Express 3 times 4 and SATA modes, but the top one also supports PCI Express 4 from the CPU if your CPU supports it. There are two full size PCI Express slots. The top one supports PCI Express 4.0 at time 16, again, with the correct CPU support. If you haven't got that support, then obviously it reverts back to PCI Express 3.0 at time 16. The second full size slot, this one here, only supports PCI Express 3.0 times two. So if you've only got one graphics card to install, you need to make sure you install it in that top slot. Now added to those are three of the smaller PCI Express times one slots and again they're PCI Express 3.0. Now you may have noticed in the unboxing the lack of any I.O. shield. So looking now at the rear I.O. panel you can see that it's fully integrated. No need to install one separately in your case. Now on here there's a single PS2 port in case you have any old mice or keyboards you'd like to use. There are two video outputs. DVI and HDMI 2.1. Now these are only gonna work if your processor has integrated graphics. For sound, there are just the three audio connectors, but 7.1 surround sound is possible, however, using the front panel connectors, which is on the front at the bottom there. Now the sound chip is the Realtek ALC887. There's also a gigabit LAN connector to connect to your wired network, 
but there's no Wi-Fi included on this board. So you'll have to add that separately with either a PCI Express card or a USB dongle. Finally, going back to the IOs, there are six USB ports. Now they consist of two USB 2.0 connectors, which are the black ones above the PS2 port. Then over here, there is one USB 3.2 Gen 2. It's a type A, which is the red one here. And then there's finally three USB 3.2 Gen 1, which are the two blue and the single white one. Now the white one is a little bit special because that's also used for BIOS flashing in tandem with the Q Flash Plus button, which is here. So as I said earlier, that can be done without having to use an old CPU. In fact, you are asked to use that with no CPU, RAM or graphics card installed. Anyway, add to these the two extra USB 3.2 ports that you can add with this front panel connector and the four extra USB 2.0 ports you can add with these two headers and there is a potential for up to 12 USB ports total. Now looking at power, there is the usual 24 pin ATX power connector and a single eight pin CPU power connector up at the top there. Now the pins for those are of a solid design for better connection and the board has 10 plus three phase VRMs with cooling supplied via these rather chunky heat sinks. Looking at the other headers on the board, there are two CPU fan connectors up here. Now one is marked CPU fan and one CPU opt. The second one designated for water cooling. There's three other fan headers for system fans, one up here, one at the side and one at the bottom. And the board uses Gigabyte's Smart Fan 5 software to control them. And there are six temperature sensors dotted all over the board. Now the Gigabyte B550 Gaming X doesn't have any LED lighting itself, but that doesn't mean there's no support for all your RGB needs. Far from it. The board supports RGB Fusion 2.0 and has two five volt addressable RGB headers. One at the bottom here and one at the top. And you can tell which one they are because they are the three pin with the gap. Additional to that, there are three 12 volt headers, which are the ones with four pins. There's one at the bottom here. Again, one at the top next to the uh, addressable, but there's also one over here, which is directly in line with the bottom of the CPU cooler. Now for something like the Wraith Prism, which has uh, a cable coming out of it to go into an RGB header, that is absolutely perfectly positioned. Now I've had one in the past on an old X470 board where I had to reroute the wiring, had to go behind the graphics card and round. It was a right pain to do. With this board, it would just go straight across from the bottom and straight into that header there. Fantastic. So the last header to look on the board is the front panel connectors. And something that I really like here is the fact that they are all color coded and they're also mapped out and printed onto the board underneath. Now the design of the board I think is pretty nice. As I mentioned, the VRMs have these chunky heat sinks and there's a big one here for the chipset. For aesthetics, there's also a plastic cowl over the back of the IOs. And the main part of the board is, well, it's less black, it's more of a really dark brown. But to be honest, that's not gonna be very noticeable once it's in its case. And the funky silver pattern on the board does make it look good. So what don't I like about the board? Well, there's no heat sinks on the M.2 slots. There's no USB-C support either. And to be honest, it could do with a couple more USB ports on the back. But what you do have here is a solid motherboard. It's good for the average user and at a decent price. Now currently in the UK, this is going for around £130. While it's not the cheapest full ATX B550 board available, the accolade for that goes to the ASRock Phantom Gaming 4. And yes, you can get even cheaper if you go down to a micro ATX board, but for a full ATX board, this is still in the lower price brackets. And it does represent really good value for money. Now I'm going to be doing a build with this board very soon with a Ryzen 5 3600 and well when it finally comes an Asus TUF RTX 3080. 
So stay tuned for that to see how it all performs. So I'll leave links to the Gigabyte B550 Gaming X in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my current Patreons and I'll put their names on the screen right now. If you want, you can pop along to patreon.com. The link will be in the description. And if you want, you can come along and support the channel too. Speaking of supporting the channel, why not pop along to our Teespring store and check out our cool merch like the t-shirt I'm wearing in this video. So give this video a like if you liked it. Got loads more videos coming very soon. Best way not to miss any of those is to subscribe below. It doesn't cost a thing and if you click the bell notification icon, you'll be told every time I upload a new video. Speaking of new videos, why not watch one of our other videos on the left hand side of the screen right now. So thanks for watching and I will see you later.